Hey guys and welcome to a new episode of the Know Your Formula One Track series. This week we are going to Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix. By the way, I will be making this video for every race on the calendar, so if you don't want to miss any, make sure to subscribe to the channel and to hit the notification bell button. The Suzuka International Racing Course has held Formula One races since 1987, and it has been on the calendar since then almost every year, other than 2007 and 2008, where it was taken over by Fuji Speedway. And it actually was supposed to alternate between Suzuka and Fuji starting 2009 but unfortunately due to the global crisis Fuji wasn't able to financially support the Formula 1 races anymore and this is why since then we've been going to Suzuka and we only missed two years recently uh, because of the Covid pandemic. Having this race so early in the year is actually very unusual. We usually go to Suzuka in September or October, but it was changed this year in order to reduce the environmental impact of shipping freight. This track is 5.81 kilometers long. It has 18 corners and only one DRS stone. It is actually a very balanced track as it has 10 right corners and eight left corners. And the reason for that is that the track has a figure of an eight. It is the only track on the calendar like this. And what it means is that it crosses itself by the means of an overpass right at turn 15. And if you think that this is a crazy shape for a track, let me tell you that the original blueprint actually included three overpass. This is insane and I'll show it right here. However, current lap around Suzuka is still super interesting. It has a lot of elevation changes and some various technical sections. We have the S's, we have the infamous 130R, we have the double apex spoon curve, but I will go over the layout of the track when I get into the sim. Michael Schumacher holds the record for the most wins at Suzuka with six different victories. But Lewis Hamilton has the fastest race lap with a 130.983 in 2019. The same year Seb Vettel got the fastest qualifying lap and it was a 127.06. So before going any further, let me actually show you in the sim what a fast lap around Suzuka looks like. We start the lap with the tracks one and only the RS zone down the front straight. Drivers will carry an enormous amount of speed into and through turn 1, taking all the curb on the exit as they prepare for the S's. Getting through these corners, which comprises of turns 3 through 6, is all about rhythm and flow. Turn 7 is nearly flat out, but it's the next section that is even more thrilling. The first of the Degner curves is scary fast and requires only a light diving of the brakes. Then it's all about getting the car straight while on the left side curve to maximize the entry and exit speed for the crossover corner. Drivers used to take the apex on the upcoming airpin, but in today's generation of cars, it's faster to go wide and get a better exit. It's flat out from here until the spoon curve, which requires a lot of finesse to get right. Making use of the curve will give drivers a better line to attack the apex of the second part of Spoon. We're now onto the backstretch, quickly heading towards one of the fastest corners in F1, 130R, which technically isn't 130R anymore, more on that later in the video. It's also where the DRS detection zone is. Then it's hard on the brakes entering the final chicane, a common overtaking spot. Traction is at a premium here as drivers try to get to full throttle as fast as possible onto the front straight and that's a lap of Suzuka. A few fun facts about this track. I just mentioned the 130R corners, which is a very famous corner in Formula 1. It was named after its 130 degree radius, which made it one of the fastest corners in Formula 1 with an average entry speed of 200 miles per hour. However, it underwent some safety improvements after it was the site of very heavy crashes, most notably Alan McNish's in the 2002 qualifying session. That's a massive accident. Wow, that's Alan McNish. A huge good. accident. It's gone over the fence. He's yeah. run wide and lost it and uh, does a tank slapper and then goes off to the right-hand side of the track. And that's why I went through the barrier. Just 
incredible energy. And so in 2003, it was actually modified to make it more like a two parts corner. So it's actually more of a fast kink now. And it actually lost its 130 degree radius. And it's now an initial 85 radius going into a 340 radius for the second part of the turn. Another fun fact is that because Suzuka used to be held towards the end of the year, it has been one of the most title deciding race in Formula 1. It actually decided the world champion five times in a row between 1987 and 1991, but in total, the Suzuka Avenue hosted 12 title deciding races. No Japanese driver ever won their home race in Suzuka. However, we saw both Suzuki and Kobayashi take third place on the podium, and it was actually Kobayashi only podium ever in Formula 1. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if Tsunoda can do something crazy in front of his home crowd um, and change his statistics to add his name on the list of Japanese drivers taking a podium or a win in Suzuka. Another fun fact is that Verstappen and Vettel both won their second championship with Red Bull at Suzuka 11 years apart to the day. Just like for most races, but even more in Suzuka, a front row start very often converts to a win of the race. Out of 33 races in Suzuka, 28 came from a front row position. However, in 2005, Kimi Raikkonen took the win after starting P17 on the grid. Oh, and they nearly touched. Can Raikkonen sweep in? Yes, yes! he can. Brilliant. Kimi Raikkonen sweeps through to take the lead. He started from 17th place. Now, onto a few memorable moments that happened at the Japanese Grand Prix. In 1989, there was a very controversial end of the race because it was a title decider between Senna and Prost. At the last chicane, they collided, and it is believed that Prost actually crashed Senna on purpose to win the championship. This is the opportunity that Senna's looking for, and he's going through. Ouch! Oh my goodness, this is fantastic! They meet. This is what we were fearing might happen during the race. And that means to say that Prost has won the world championship. While Prost was out of the race after this crash, Senna went on to finishing the race, but he was later disqualified because of the way he took one of the chicane, which actually led to Prost winning the championship. What's interesting is that the following year, in 1990, they crashed again, but this time at turn one, and it actually favored Senna for the championship, which he ended up winning that year. He's trying to go through on the inside, and it's happened immediately. This is amazing. Senna goes off at the first corner, but what has happened to Prost? He has gone off too. Yes, and that makes Hatton Senna world champion this year. Fast forward to 2006, that was another uh, title deciding race. This time it was between Alonso and Schumacher. And we saw Alonso take the win after Schumacher, who was leading the race, got an engine failure 17 laps before the end of the race. The well, what's Who's blown up? It's, it's a Ferrari. Ferrari! The Ferrari, Ferrari. is stopping! Wow! Unbelievable! Did you see Alonso, the wave from Alonso? Alonso goes into the race lead and with it... Unbelievable! The championship, what a twist! Now something that I wish I didn't have to mention today, but in 2014, that was a very tragic year for Formula One. The French driver, Jules Bianchi, crashed. It was a chaotic race. There was heavy rain. And unfortunately, he lost control of his car at the Dunlop curve because of some standing water, I believe. And he crashed into a recovery vehicle that was there actually taking care of a previous incident that happened in the race. He sustained a severe injury to the head, was taken to the hospital and was put into an induced coma. He never regained consciousness and passed away from his injury nine months later.
crash also led to more prominent discussions around head protections in F1. And even though it took four years from that date, in 2018, they finally decided to add the halo to the F1 cars. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about doing this uh, in terms of visibility, look of the car, but I think they could not have made a better decision. It has saved many drivers since then, including Roman Gorgon that had a terrible crash and I think honestly stayed alive thanks to the halo. So now fast forward to 2018. We saw Vettel and Hamilton battle for the title. Hamilton already had the advantage, but Vettel could have still uh, made it if it wasn't for him colliding with Verstappen, taking him out of contention for the championship. Now a little bit about last year, we saw Max Verstappen take the win just like he did for most of the races last year, but he actually did with an impressive 20 second gap to the second place. But that's enough talking about the past. Uh, let's jump in the same, do a few laps around Suzuka and talk about the strategies for this race. And let's talk a little bit about the last race and what happened before going into prediction time. Hey guys, here we are at Suzuka. It is a very demanding track, very technical lap around Suzuka, so I will do my best <laughs> to drive and talk at the same time. It is a very fun track. The lap <coughs> really flows very well. Um, there's a good amount of high speed corners, but also a few very slow corners like this one, the Kobayashi corner. There's a lot of known corners around here, like this one, the 130R. So in terms of strategy for Suzuka, given the nature of the track with all the elevation changes and all the very demanding corners, tire degradation is usually pretty high. So it's usually a two-stop strategy around here. I think there was actually a chance of rain this weekend in Suzuka, which I hope it's not gonna rain because usually it calls for a very, very dangerous and tricky race here. But it would also maybe give the chance to other drivers other than Max to maybe take the win. So this track is always considered one of the favorite in Formula 1 because it is so smooth and it flows very well despite all those tricky corners. It is a very fun lap here around Suzuka and I'm wondering uh, what you guys think. So. If you want to let me know actually in the comments which is your favorite Formula 1 track and why, I'm very curious to hear it. I have to say, of all the tracks so far, this is one of my favorite for sure. Even though I'm still not, definitely not perfect at it and I still have to improve, it is really fun and really enjoyable. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the last race because I don't think anyone expected that podium for the Australian Grand Prix. I don't think anyone expected that Max would be out of the race after only a few laps. And actually it was pretty funny because I saw some videos afterwards of the fan in the grandstands and everyone was actually <laughs> celebrating and so happy to see that Max was out. Pretty funny, a little bit sad for him. So actually the winner of the race, Carlos Sainz, Huge performance from Carlos Sainz, knowing that he basically just had his appendicitis removed a couple weeks before the race. So for him to be able to recover so quickly and then get the win is just insane. This is very encouraging for him and for Ferrari in general to see them, you know, fight for podium places two Ferraris on the podium on the last race. Needless to say that I was obviously very happy <laughs> about that result. Okay, we got it. Yes, we have it. P1, baby, P1. Baby shark. Oh. Good job, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I have to say I was a little bit disappointed. Chastri didn't get third place he would have been the first Australian to ever be on the podium at his 
home race. It would have been just amazing to see. But Lando really deserved that third place. I am always happy to see the McLarens on the podium anyways. The other thing that happened obviously is George Russell's crash on the last lap. It is pretty insane because it's exactly what happened last year when Sainz got his podium as well. He's one and only win actually. Sainz was the only non-Red Bull driver taking a victory last year and George crashed as well on that race in the last lap. Just pretty <laughs> incredible. Obviously there was a lot of controversy about that crash because people say that you know Alonso did break way too early. The FIA decided that it was Alonso's fault and gave Alonso a 22nd penalty after the end of the race, which put him from 6 on the grid to 8. I really don't know what to think about that. I think that George could have avoided that crash still. Alonso may have changed the way he was driving, but I feel like this is just part of racing and part of, you know, trying to fight for the championship points. So I don't know, I feel like the 22nd penalty was a little bit harsh. I think like a 5 or 10 second penalty max would have been enough. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts. A lot of you will probably disagree with me and said that he deserved it. But I have to say I do like Alonso as a driver. Maybe I'm a little biased. All right, so it's prediction time. And first, I want to thank every one of you that commented on the last video. I had a lot of responses um, and unfortunately, no one got it right. Uh, I think no one expected that on the last race that Max would get a DNF. Most of the people, including myself, uh, had Max in first. However, I still want to give a shout out to someone uh, this week and it is Very Old Man 1985 because it came closest by putting Norris as the winner and Leclerc and Science in second and third position. So now for the upcoming race, I'm very unsure to be honest, uh, but again, I think I'm gonna put Max in first position because last year it was 20 seconds ahead of the rest of the grid. I'm gonna put Lando in second place because I think it will have um, confidence boost from what happened last week. And I will put Science in third because I think he's been doing really great um, for the beginning of the season and I'm sure he's gonna keep pushing and keep trying to prove himself because he still doesn't have a seat for next year. Please don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments below, post your top three predictions and I will give a shout out to whoever get it right in the next video. In the meantime, if you enjoyed watching, please subscribe to the channel and give a like to the video and I will see you in the next one.